The Disciplined Investor is all about you, your money, and the markets. Sit back and get ready for this edition of The Disciplined Investor Podcast. This episode of The Disciplined Investor is sponsored by Horowitz & Company. If you're looking for a portfolio manager, look no further. Horowitz & Company, from seed through harvest, cultivating financial success. You know, there used to be only two ways to meet for business, over the phone or in person. Now there's a better way. Use GoToMeeting to meet online. With GoToMeeting, everyone sees your computer desktop on their computer screen. So you get the best of both worlds. It's like meeting in person, but without wasting time and money traveling. And your conference calls will be more effective. The best part is that you can actually try it for free. That's right, GoToMeeting is free right now for 30 days. For this special offer, you must visit www.gotomeeting.com slash podcasts. That's gotomeeting.com slash podcasts for a free trial. Hello and welcome. This is Andrew Horowitz, and this is the Disciplined Investor Podcast. Welcome aboard to episode number 119. Thanks for joining me today. We have a special guest. It's going to be Jim Rogers that's coming on board. You know him, the investment biker, worked with George Soros on the Quantum Fund, lives in Singapore. And I thought what we'd do today is spend a little time on the international markets, prepping you up for this discussion with Jim Rogers and, and really getting into some of the detail of the Asian markets and the global environment right now. And then we could spend some time talking with him about what he thinks and what he sees for the future. Remember, he's a big commodities guy. He really enjoys the, uh, the, the Asian markets and I think uh, prefers the Asian uh, currencies over the dollar somewhat from what I've seen and what I've read of him. And I thought we would get into that as well. But uh, what I thought we'd do right now is spend a little time talking about some of the Asian markets. And boy, have they been on fire. As a matter of fact, if you look at the China market, the not, not the Hong Kong now, not the Hang Seng, but the China market, the Shenzhen, it's up 100% year to date. And there's two of those, one's an A and a B, but anywhere from 82 to 100%, depending on which one of those you choose. We've seen the Straits Times, which is, of course, Singapore, of 41% for the year. And, I mean, when you look down this list, even the Hang Seng of 37%, um, we're looking at the, the stock exchange of Thailand, up 36%. Jakarta is up 59% year-to-date. Sri Lanka up 65%. And um, Ho Chi Minh City up only 37 cents. We're going to 37%. We'll cry for them. But, you know, of course, they've had a really rough time through 2007 and 2008. They were a little bit behind behind us, behind the U.S. when it came to the markets really you know, selling off dramatically. But what I also wanted to talk to you about, more important than just the returns, let's take a look at what's going on in terms of these countries, their GDP, their, their unemployment rate, et cetera. So I took a few things. Japan, first of all, um, the GDP is year over year down 8.8%. They have a GDP, a total GDP of about $4.3 trillion, the biggest of all the Asian countries. Although recently, supposedly China is going to start eclipsing them. The China market has a 7.9% year over year GDP growth, whereas India has a 5.8%. And, and again, in terms of size, you really start scaling down very dramatically um, when you get past Japan, China, 3.2 trillion, India, 1.1 trillion. When you get down to Thailand, you're at $245 billion, Singapore, at one point, uh, excuse me, it's $161 billion. Year over year, Singapore is down 3.7%, but they have a surplus. They have a, they have a surplus of exports essentially of 12 percent in Singapore as compared to their GDP. So it's the uh, divisor, if you will. Um, and you know they have an unemployment rate of only 3.2 percent, where Japan only has has 5.2, China 4.3, India 7.3, and perhaps the biggest in the region is Indonesia with 8.1 percent overall unemployment. But I also I got some other statistics I thought were interesting. Um, let's compare that now to the United States. So the United States is the number one GDP in the world with uh, $13 trillion GDP. Canada is only at uh, $1.3 trillion only. Uh, the Eurozone is at $12 trillion. The entire Eurozone is at $12 trillion. And supposedly our GDP year over year is going to be about 2.5% in the negative. We have a deficit of 7.8%. The Eurozone is pretty much flat. Uh, UK is a negative 2.6, and again, just looking at that in, you know, relatively, um, when we look at the surplus to deficit, Japan is a negative 3.8. Again, we're negative 7.8, uh, um, and there's really no significant uh, year-over-year growth. The worst, uh, gro worst country is probably uh, Mexico right now when it comes to, um, you know, this region. 
Um, but here's what's interesting, the jobless rate. Listen to this. We're at 9.5% in the United States. Canada's 8.6. Brazil is at 8.1. Eurozone's at 9.5 as well. But when you compare that to most, if not all, of the entire uh, Asian continent, I mean, we're talking about fours, fives, sixes, maybe some sevens in there. Kind of a different animal, different situation going on in Asia. And maybe that's some of the reason why they're so easily able to to really um, you know, move out of this in such a dramatic fashion. They're not dragged down by this massive unemployment. You know, they're, they're a different type of place to be, place to work. And, and we'll see if that really holds out. And like I said, we're going to ask a lot of questions from the guru in this area, who is Jim Rogers, and we're going to get to him right in a second. I just want to mention to you that uh, some people did ask me again um, – and thank me, I got some emails, so I'm going to tell you once more. If you want to check out the Discipline Investor Managed Growth Strategy, it's a virtual tour of kind of, uh, you know, how we, how we manage money. Audio, visual, 14 minutes, I take you through it. Go over to the disciplinedinvestor.com. We'll put a link right in the, the website notes in there for you. Or it's on the right-hand side. It says it's a little blue uh, kind of rectangular uh, thing that says, you know, a hedge fund without a hedge fund. Um, go check that out, click it, and spend some time there. I think you'll really enjoy it. And when we get back, we're going to be talking with Jim Rogers, and I think you'll enjoy that. I know I've been looking forward to this for some time. And by the way, just to let you know, he's in Singapore. This is a very late night for me on the podcast, so I hope you enjoy it. Stick around. We'll be right back on the Disciplined Investor Podcast. And we are back on the Disciplined Investor Podcast. And as I told you, we're with Jim Rogers all the way in Singapore. Good morning, sir. How are you? I'm fine. Delighted to be here. Thanks. So I thought we'd start out. I told you that we had a discussion with my listeners a little bit about the global situation, the kind of uh, unbalanced situation right now where we see not only China, but the entire Asian region almost, as I see it, picking up the rest of the world. Is that how you see it? Well, I would hardly say that Asia or China especially can pick up the rest of the world. The Chinese economy is one-tenth the size of the European and American economies combined, it is. So, you know, even if they boom, it's going to take a lot more than that. Uh, India and China alone are tiny economically compared, right. to, compared to the rest of the world. But things are better in Asia. I haven't said that. Let me see, quickly say things are better <coughs> in, in Asia than they are in the West. You know, the largest creditor nations in the world are all in Asia now. China, Japan, Korea, South Korea, sorry, Taiwan, Hong Kong, Singapore. I mean, the money's out here now, whether we like it or not. Yeah, it's, it's, it, it is quite astonishing. And, um, you know, now the talk of, uh, you know, changing the... 